How's it going everyone? It's Harvey from Tour Review and today's episode is a pretty interesting one. So I've lined up five days off work and I've booked the ferry from Dover to Calais in North France where I'll be riding somewhere. <laughs> right now I'm about to catch the ferry in about seven or eight hours time. I don't know where I'm going, I don't know where I'm staying, my only plan is to try and avoid, avoid the rain. Don't worry, I'm not taking the Varadero. <laughs> I've only got five days, so I'm taking the MT-07. Nice, quick and efficient bike. I really want to see what it handles like for a long distance. A very comfy riding position. Anyway, originally I planned to try and get down to the Alps in the five days and come back, obviously. Um, that's not going to work, unfortunately, because it's snowing in the Alps. It's the second week of April and it's still snowing. Um, I wanted to go to the Nuremberg Ring as well in Germany. Um, that's snowing, yeah. So, um, most likely going to head more west coast France. I'd like to hit the Pyrenees, but that's a lot of mileage to get down there, so... Fingers crossed, anyway. <laughs> but yeah, should be a good one. Little solo tour planned. Got to get down to the ferry in about 7 or 8 hours time. I should probably sleep, because that's at 7 in the morning. Um, but yeah, let's get ready. I'm going to show you guys how I've managed to pack all my gear onto the MT-07. As you probably know, the MT-07 doesn't have much storage space. But, there's a company that's come up with a very interesting concept. So in terms of packing all my stuff, uh, it's a five day trip, I'm going fairly minimal. Uh, jumper, um, pair of trainers, couple of t-shirts, couple of pants, um, of course toiletries as well, very important. <laughs> um, but in terms of packing all that stuff onto the MT-07, as you guys know, there's not much space to put stuff on the back of that bike. So I got in contact recently with a company called Krieger, uh, the UK based company who make really great luggage solutions for motorcycles. Um, I bought one of their original Krieger US 20s last year. It's basically a waterproof dry bag that has a lot of attachments that allow you to strap it on and customise it to suit your bike and the needs of what you need it to do. As I said, 100% waterproofing, really well made, very strong materials on the outside in case they do fall off. But again, a lot of good attachments to strap it onto the bike. I got in contact with Krieger and they sent me out uh, two US 10s. So these are going to strap on the side of my US 20 and increase my 20 litre storage capacity up to 40 litres. So I've got plenty of room to put my stuff in now. Uh, they've also sent me out a Krieger R3 waste bag, which is just a really nice quality waste bag. Stores all the essentials around your waist, waterproof as well, so just a nice addition really. Um, I've also got a few of their travel organisers. I'll open this bad boy up. It's just got some nice zips and compartments to store everything nice and neatly, just to keep it all compact, really. So yeah, all these bits and pieces are going to be linked in the description below. Once again, thanks to Krieger for helping me out this one. I really do appreciate it. Great quality stuff. Anyway, let's go and see how I managed to pack everything on the MT-07. And it's probably time... We got on that ferry. <laughs> Good morning everyone, it's Harvey from Tour Review, half four in the morning and we are finally packed and ready to get down to the Eurotunnel. <laughs> Just put my little waste bag on now. It's funny to think that just under two years ago I was making the same trip on a 125 and now I'm on the MT-07. <laughs> but yeah, hopefully you guys can see this, a Krieger bag set up, really well done. US 20 on the back, two US 10s on the side, a lot of storage room here, 40 litres. A waste bag on the back as well, so hopefully that won't get in the way too much. Yeah, but let's get going, have some fun, see some sights. It's funny to think, just under two years ago, I was making the same trip on the 125 all the way down to Spain to my grandma. <laughs> very funny feeling. It feels very strange now having all this power and being able to cruise at a much higher speed. I mean, I can cruise at the MT probably a hundred pretty much all day long. Whereas with the Varadero, you can only realistically cruise at about 60. 65 at a very much push. 
Uh, not like cruise 100 on this. I mean, cruising speed between sort of 80 mile an hour top ends for, for a sort of cruising pace is pretty much all you're going to need on this, really. Above that, the wind does get a little bit too much. But uh, yeah, luggage is all strapped on fine. I've got my thermal top on, a little fin jumper, and my levers on, uh, as long with some long johns as well, and I'm doing all right, sort of thermal cruising wise. So uh, yeah, let's keep following this one. Get down to the M20, and on our way to Dover. Oh man, this is going to be such good fun. <laughs> well, I'm absolutely freezing. <laughs> But I've made it to Dover, the castle's up there, and we're on towards the ferry. Hi there. Merci. Da -da -da. Here we go. Da -da -da. Thank you very much, sir. Oh yeah. Thank you very much, sir. As good as it looks in the picture. Yeah, that's right. Cheers, man. Thanks very much. Da, da, da. Can we go on, yeah? Yeah, buddy. Is it 111? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Right, right, Cheers. Right. Here we are, the Dover Docks. We're getting on the ferry to France. the ferry and that's all the Krieger luggage strapped on the back it's done well so far actually to be honest as you can see it's super duper stable you're not rocking that back and forward so really good stuff beautiful that is wow you just don't find this in England unless you do some proper decent long traveling around Scotland or Wales but this this is beautiful man this is beautiful everyone so I've just stopped off in La Touche in uh, France just down from Calais uh, to grab a little sandwich and stuff uh, yeah finally some nice weather <laughs> uh, the clouds have cleared over bit of blue sky sun is out I'm happy <laughs> anyway we're gonna head back on the dual carriageway a16 I believe it is and then scoot over down the e402 which would land us over down in Dieppe uh, slash Le Havre area Le Havre <laughs> which would be nice and then um, planning on staying in a hostel in Le Havre tonight and then from there head over to Normandy and then down through to Le Mans is my plan as long as the weather holds up he says <laughs> anyway Let's get going on the dual carriageway and catch up with you guys in a bit.
here we are. I've arrived in Le Havre. I decided to stay here just because I'm absolutely knackered from getting up at four in the morning this morning. Um, probably going to head down to Le Mans tomorrow, but it's 30 euros for the night, this place, for a double bed. And, uh, yeah, I've got Wi-Fi and I've got parking secure, so I'm happy. Alrighty, how's it going everyone? It's Harvey from Tour Review. It's the morning now, uh, we're currently on Saturday. Um, good night's sleep actually, it's currently 8.30 in the morning, I've slept since 8.30 in the evening yesterday, because getting up to the Eurotunnel absolutely knackered me at 4 in the morning. Anyway, let me give you a little tour of my uh, room at the Eclo Hotel in Le Havre in France. 30 euros for the night, included Wi-Fi, secure parking and a double bed, private room. Let me show you what 30 euros gets you in France. So we have a key card. Oh, key card in, and bam! Oh, can't see much. Can't see much. Come on, card. In we go. We have TV, window, double bed with lights, shower, toilet, and me. Just woken up, bags are all packed on the MT-07. I need to clean up the straps a little bit actually, whilst I'm here. Um, but yeah, luggage is working really well so far. We've got some fellow motorcyclists. How's it going guys? <laughs> where are you going today? Uh, we're going uh, to, uh, up to the coast. Oh nice, lovely. Yeah. Cool. And you? Uh, Le Mans? Okay. Le Mans, okay. Maybe, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, that Krieger luggage is really packed up nicely. Really happy with stuff. Okay, on to the bike we get. There we go, we're on. Au revoir. <laughs> That's like the only two French words I know. I am a lot more energetic and excited. Uh, I purely put that down to the fact that I've been working flat out of work it's a very busy season in the motorcycle shop at the moment very busy season and um, with that you do get very tired I mean it's flat out phones ringing in that shop at the moment <laughs> and inquiries and purchase sales everything it's flat out of work so I've been knackered um, getting four hours of sleep last night and getting on the the old ferry probably wasn't the greatest idea um, I shouldn't go this way can't I yeah Getting four hours of sleep last night probably wasn't the greatest idea. But um, yeah, it's got me down here anyway. I'm a lot more energetic, excited and passionate now because I've got my sleep. <laughs> so anyway, uh, we're going to get going on the road. Head over to Cayenne. Uh, it's a town on the way over to Omaha Beach. Now, if you guys don't know what Omaha Beach is, it's the really famous beach that was used in the Saving Private Ryan film. And it's actually where the, uh, the D-Day landings happened back in 1944 in World War II when the Allied force was trying to push back uh, Germany away from France. And that was the first sort of landings that really sort of started it all and sort of won the war, as to say. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm going to head over to Omaha Beach. Luckily, I've missed out on much of the rain. Thank God. <laughs> and uh, head down there. And then from Normandy Beach... Uh, we're going to go on some country roads and hopefully head over towards, I'm going to say Le Mans, but uh, no promises in that one. I want to head down there, hopefully find a hostel and some nice roads, and then go from there really. So uh, yeah, let's get going down to Omaha Beach and see where life takes us. Uh, I think I can go this way, can I? Probably can, I think. Yeah. So, to Cayenne we go. <laughs> So I've decided to get on the dual carriageway just because it is raining and over down on the west coast there's no rain. So I'm just going to try and get down there as quick as I can on the dual carriageway. Uh, I say quick as I can, take it very easy in the wet obviously. Um, but yeah, let's get over there. 
I've been following a guy on Instagram who's currently taking his BMW GS over from America. I think it's Tim Burke Photo or something. I'll put a link on the screen now. And he uh, recently uh, got his bike uh, shipped, or shipped, flown from uh, the USA over to England and then over to France. And he's been going through Normandy recently. So it's been really interesting to see his pictures and where he's staying and stuff. So I'm looking forward to sort of exploring that Normandy region. So I've never really been much on the west coast of France. I've done a lot of the Alps when I was young, sort of going up there and skiing and stuff. But um, never really explored the west coast of France, really. So yeah, it'll be an interesting one. This bridge is pretty cool, though. I'll give you that. It reminds me a lot of the, uh, I think it's the Severn Bridge that takes you over to Wales and England. If you sort of have the sort of Bristol Channel coming through it, it seems very similar. <laughs> yeah, let's uh, try and avoid the wind and keep going. We have a motorcycle ticket thing here. Okay. Two euros ten. For what? For what? <laughs> So I've just dropped down from the town of Bale and I'm heading out now a little bit further north up towards the sea, up towards Omaha Beach in, uh, I don't actually know where it is. <laughs> I'm just following the road and following the sort of rough direction and that should guide me there. Look, I've got no GPS, I mean I've got a little map in the back and when it does get tricky I do, I do use my phone, look at the GPS on there and it shows me where that's time on the map and then work out from there. But yeah, that's pretty much how I get there really. Uh, So we stopped off this little beautiful French town. They've got a nice little remembrance memorial. Oh, they sacrificed their lives back in 1944. Crikey. Beautiful little town though. But like I said, luggage is work. But like I was saying, the luggage is doing absolutely awesome. Really comfortable. Uh, it's storing my sandwich in there, my water bottle. Uh, all the stuff's completely dry and they got caught out in that massive downpour earlier. So that's doing really well. <laughs> but yeah, time to get the map out, uh, get back on the bike and find Omar Beach. The roads begin to open up. This is more like it. Oh wow. I am being spoiled. Look at this, look at this. I've come from all that grey sky, cloud and miserable weather to blue skies and absolute joy. Wow. My favourite word. On my way down to the uh, Omaha beach, found a couple of gunning tunnels, I think it is. How's it going everyone? So I've currently made it over to the American Cemetery over in Omaha Beach. Uh, they've got a really nice visitor centre there which just explains the whole happenings here and everything but it's just crazy to see over 10,000 men and women who've dedicated their lives so we can live in peace now. It really is just a sight to have witnessed. Yeah. But that's Omaha Beach down there, where the actual landings happened. So I'm going to go ahead and explore down there a little bit later on, but... Yeah, it just gets you thinking. It really does. How grateful we are to be where we are, because these people sacrificed their lives running into no man's land, really. And the Germans had full control of the beaches and just sacrificed their lives for our future.
And here's one of the old gunning stations on the beach that's been completely cut out. Is it a free toll? Is it a free toll? Yeah, it is. <laughs> the life of a motorcyclist. How cool is that? So guys, the plan is to head down to Lamar, get away from the rain and hopefully find a little bit warmer climate down south. 113 kilometers apparently. So uh, yeah, let's get sat in the seat, get cruise mode on and uh, chill out. I say cruise mode, there's no actual cruise control on it. So let's just chill out. <laughs> just filled up with fuel. I managed to fill about 12 litres into her actually, with about 35 kilometres on reserve. Just stopped at this little total petrol station uh, on, on the way down to the Mall. And I saw a sign up in the window, it's actually saying there's a 24 hour motorcycle race at the Mons track. So uh, I might actually go to head that out. It's, it's over today and I think the final's tomorrow. There's a 24 hour event uh, up over to tomorrow. So uh, yeah, maybe I'll check that out when I'm down there. So back on the bike. Oh, there's a couple of bikes and it's a really nice road this one apparently so let's give it a little try out <laughs> mm. just stopped off at McDonald's don't worry only use their Wi-Fi not their crappy food <laughs> uh, yeah there's nice bikes here we've got a uh, CBR Fowl and a Phaser 6 down there as well. One of the old ones with the old carburetors. Very nice. <laughs> anyway, um, it's currently race weekend in Le Mans. So they bumped their prices up from about 30 euros a night, which is bloody decent, to 59 euros. Which seems quite expensive, but 50 quid a night for a room with, with uh, secure car parking and Wi-Fi in the heart of the city isn't too bad, to be honest. So I've ended up having to pay 59 euros. It's one of the only places I could find. But to be honest, it's just so basic and lovely. It's a, it's a double bed, shower, bathroom, secure parking, Wi-Fi, done. That's it. Nothing fancy, really. But I, I've actually purchased a second night here. She said there's a promotion going on. It's 19, 19, 19 euros for your second night, which is like, what, £12 or something ridiculous? I was like, yep, sign me up. So I'm staying here for actually two nights this time. I'm uh, going to drop the bags off in the room, leave them there overnight, and uh, yeah, be nice. I can take the bags off the bike, explore them all, find some nice roads, and just relax a little bit, really. But there's a lot of bikes here at the moment because it's this uh, race weekend in the Mont. Oh, wow, we've got a lot of bikes. A lot of bikes. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. I've woken up in sunny Le Mans. As you can see from the hotel room, we're back at the Eclo Hotel in Le Mans, very similar to the one in Le Havre. Uh, double bed, sink, toilet, shower, tour and scarf, got to hang it up. Instructions, key card, helmets down there. It's an absolute mess, but let's have a look outside. Sun, oh my god, I haven't seen this in days. All the bikes are getting going over to Le Mans racetrack at the moment. As you can see down there, there is my one! Amongst all of them, but wow, it is a beautiful day. Um, time to get out, get some croissants from the boulangerie, and hopefully I can try and get my way into Le Mans racetrack. Hopefully. I'll make it happen. <laughs> well, here we are, everyone. Look at this. Oh my word, look at all these bikes! Pardon? So I don't speak much French, man. The ticket? Yep. Permits to return in the parking? Yeah, 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 cool. Nice one. Back, return to England. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Present paper of bike. Pardon? Paper of bike to back the parking certificate on oh, the V5 uh, I haven't got it with me man uh, uh, yeah. 
Garez-vous à côté. Tiens, euh, il n'y a pas de papier C'est en anglais <rire> You are there You are there Never uh, it, It's in the hotel ne, Never, never uh, No, no, uh, no uh, in, uh, for you Sur you uh, You don't have never paper uh, At the hotel no, here Hotel, not here, no, 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 no. Driving, driving license Pardon Driving license Ça faut que je dise en français, permis de conduire <laughs> I'm lost, I'm lost <laughs> The drive license. Driving license, yep. Yes, you have. Oh, I've got that, yeah. yeah. Okay. I thought you meant the uh, document the, for this. Yeah, okay. To come back, I listen, I look this number yep. with you and this the same number and the bicycle. Cool, nice one. I'll keep it safe. Okay. Uh, Alright, merci. Guys, so I've made it into the Mon Circuit. How's it going everyone? Just washed and showered. Just packing all my stuff up now. So, yeah, it's uh, it's going, it's going. <laughs> um, got a lot of stuff to pack, but then we can get back on the bike. Oh, here's the mirror. Uh, it's not a bad little room to be honest though, for 25 euros a night or whatever it is. It does the job, it does the job. All right, let's get packing. Uh, plan is to head down to Paris via Country Roads today. So, should be a good one. Let's get going. In distance, the Eiffel Tower. Look at that. It's crazy to think it was nearly a year and nearly, nearly two years ago since I was last here on my original 125cc Euro Tour. And yeah, wow. Beautiful city. Beautiful city. <laughs> so we get head over there. 
get some pictures and uh, grab a crap ray. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> I think I'm going this way. Amazing, really, isn't it? Oh wow, there's complete security around the whole Eiffel Tower now. They've completely changed it all up. Yeah, crikey. Used to be able to go inside there easily, but no. To be fair, I understand why. Alright, it's time to get out of here. Everyone wants their picture next to the bike and it's getting a bit of like, okay, do I start charging them for this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Paris, really interesting place, really interesting place. I think I'm going to try and find a hostel for the night here. I think. <laughs> Not much of a plan again. Ha, ha, ha.